what I wanted to do was, was come into the shop here and talk a little bit about how I clean um, this Kibler. That's a really big uh, issue a lot of people have with their muzzleloaders, getting them clean um, and fighting off rust. Uh, now, that being said, when it comes to muzzleloaders, everybody has their own thing. If you ask 10 different people how they clean their muzzleloader, odds are you're going to get like 12 or 15 different answers. Um, so this isn't the only way to do it. This is the way I do it. And uh, it seems to prevent rust and uh, any corrosion and pitting anything pretty well for me. Um, so I hope it does for you as well. So I'm just going to set my, my Kibler to the side here. I primarily use a couple different products. Um, the one being Balstall. Got a little uh, can here I got from Deer Creek Products I picked up. I like using this because uh, I like it especially around my lock. I can kind of just spray around my lock, let it soak in, and then rub it off later. I can also do a couple spritzes down the barrel, let that foam up and kind of travel down into the barrel. Also got this Shenandoah Valley that I picked up earlier this fall. You know, it's been a pretty good lube and cleaner for me. I like it. It's nice and lightweight. doesn't leave a lot of residue. Um, I don't really know where you can get this. Um, I picked it up again from Deer Creek Products um, here in Indiana, which is, uh, and I've liked it so far. I, I've enjoyed some of the patches that I've lubed with it. And I think it does a good job cleaning in between shots. Lastly, I've got some moose milk here from Flintlocks LLC, also here in Indiana. I'm very fortunate to have a few shops around here that I can get supplies from. You can make your own moose milk at home. Sometimes it's just easier to pick up a bottle to use. Um, I use a lot of this stuff interchangeably, so I'll go through and, and do a couple sprays of Ballastol like I've done down the barrel. And then another thing I like to do is spritz some around the lock. So I've got this kind of just setting on my vise here, and I'll come through and really just hit all of this area with that Ballastol. And maybe this doesn't work for you. Um, I'll make sure to set it to half cock here, keeping my fingers away from the trigger or anything. Just kind of let that soak in. You'll notice, especially if you're shooting a flintlock and you don't um, clean or, or lube this barrel, really uh, pretty far up here, you'll start to get some just light surface rust and things. So I like to spray that on there and just let it soak. I'll grab a couple clean patches here, kind of rub it on the barrel, pick up a little bit of that extra, and I'll come in here around the cock and our top jaw and just give all of this a nice light coating. Right now, uh, the weather's not looking like I'm going to be able to get out and do much more, especially flintlock shooting as winter kind of sets in here. So I kind of call this a um, kind of a, a medium clean. It's a little bit more than if I was planning on going and shooting tomorrow, um, but it's not as much as if I was, wasn't planning on shooting for another six months. So I try to, you know, get out a couple times a month if I can and do a little flintlock or muzzleloader shooting. Grab a little bit off the vise there, hit that. So I'll just come through and do some of this, um, get around the cock here, underneath there. Now it's not really gonna rust or pit, you know, around your lock if you're checking it often. Like you, you can be worried about in your barrel and things. Um, what you'll get on your lock a lot of times is just some surface rust, which would just be some light brown rust all over the parts on your lock. It's, you know, you, you obviously don't want any rust if you can keep from it when you're working with a muzzleloader. You know, so you want to make sure you're oiling and everything in between your t trips to the range. So I'm just taking this patch and rubbing around kind of these other parts here. Getting in between kind of the, the back hinge here with your frizzin can be a little tricky. So sometimes you'll see guys come in with a screwdriver or something. I like to use like a toothpick maybe or a Q-tip to get in there. And then with that kind of done, I'm just going to do another light spray with that bow stall. Let that soak in a little bit. And like I said, because I have a little bit of time between um, what I'm doing, um, or when I'm gonna be shooting again, I'm actually gonna pop this lock off here. So we're gonna come back here. I like to do this if I can inside or on a clean, uh, you know, cabin porch or something. The last thing you wanna do is, is be cleaning this out in the woods and lose a part in a bunch of, of weeds. I'm just rocking that lock back and forth to pop it out. You can see we've got a little bit of residue and some just grime underneath here. But we don't have any rust. Um, you know, so I've got my lock pretty well seated against the barrel there. We just have a little bit, um, you know, to me, this is a little residue from that bowel stall working back in there. 
Uh, and if we left this here, it would rust over time, but it's really not too bad. Um, and you can see here, we have just a little bit of moisture and things on the inside of our lock. So I can set that there, grab this, and we can spray that a little bit too. Just using that cleaning patch in here, and just rubbing that out. Do the same thing with our lock here, just give it a nice scrub. You can see there we have a little bit of browning in there underneath. Um, it's kind of that flat face on the cock. Rub that down. That's all doing okay. It doesn't hurt to, to leave this stuff a little oiled. And really before I finish up, we'll wipe this down with some cleanse oil inside and out just to make sure we have a nice clean finish there. Popping that frizzin forward so I can get to some different areas. I just want to get in here and remove any black powder marks that I can see. Let's get rid of them. Now I've noticed um, if you watched the, the videos on, on how I built this kit, um, I used the Brownells Oxfo Blue to get kind of the French gray finish um, that I learned from Mike Brooks and Wayne Estes. Um, some of these cleaners do start to take that off. You can see here on the inside, of my cock here. It's not nearly as colored where I've scrubbed that over time. I'm not too worried about that really, that uneven finish, because this is kind of a, to me, it's a it's a mountain rifle. It can be a little rough. Um, its elegance is, is in, its, in its shape and design for me really. So I don't mind that color change, especially like here around our frizzing and things. I'm not worried about that. I think that kind of adds to the story of the piece. Okay, I'm liking where that lock is at. I'm just gonna set it over here to the side for now with its other parts. Coming back up here, I'm gonna give this another spritz. You see a lot of folks uh, take their barrel out of the stock in between when they're shooting. I mean, I, th I think that's really up to you. Uh, you know, I can really check this probably about once a year and, and come in here and, and make sure I don't have any bad rust or anything in there. But I'm, I'm not really too worried about that. This barrel was really tight going in. So about all I do is, is make sure I get some nice cleaner in there. And, uh, and it's good to go for me personally. Again, you know, a million ways to do all of this. And, and a lot of them are right. And really, I guess all of them are right. So I like that pretty good. Come over here and make sure I wipe this down too. You can see I've got some more discoloration on this barrel here. Um, you know, especially around this front sight. I'm not, I'm not worried about that. I think it still looks like a nice, a nice rifle and, and works. I mean, you saw it perform. It, I think it does a pretty good job. What we get to do now is kind of the arduous process of cleaning the barrel. I'm going to spritz this one more time with some Ballastol and let that soak in, kind of foam all the way down that barrel. Um, you'll notice I have a little bit of discoloration maybe around the muzzle on this wood and I'll just go through and, and wipe that down again with kind of a ballastol patch. Clean that up a little bit. But really, you know, it, if you built one of these to be as new as they are uh, when you finish them forever, you're not going to want to shoot them very much. And I kind of, again, take that to the, that's how I think about cleaning all of these. I get them clean so they're not rusting, they remain accurate. But if there's a little wear and tear on them over time, I, I'm fine with that. So I'm going to take that patch that I've been using. I'm just going to run it down. And I'm just going to go down once and up. And when you do that, you should be able to feel a little bit that grime in there. So just like we saw on the, um, as we were shooting there, it's a pretty dirty patch. That's our first patch after we've shot. Uh, so I'm going to run it down on the other side. And already I can feel down in that breach that it's not nearly as like a, you'll, you'll feel it like, um, like you're scraping over a gravel road or something. You'll, just, you'll feel that, that grime in there. So that patch too is, is pretty nasty. You can kind of see in there. Let me see if I can show you. You can see in there we've got some large flecks there on top. And I take that to be, you know, just some some fouling that's connected to the to the rifling and to the barrel and that's the kind of thing we want to make sure we're getting rid of so we're not leaving anything in the bore that's going to pit and rust over time so then what i'll do really from this point is i'll just take my cleaning patches get them pretty wet with my chosen cleaning solution and just run them up and down 
until I get a nice clean bore out of this. Now, as you use your muzzle loader over time, you're only gonna get it so clean. Um, it's gonna be, you know, oily, dirty. What we're really wanting to get out is that black powder residue. So, and that's gonna kind of neutralize that, um, that pitting and that fouling by getting that black powder out of there. And by getting that nice and wet, I know that I'm really getting as much cleaner in there as I can. So here's our first patch that we sent down and here's our second one. So you can already see it's a little bit lighter. So I'm running down another wet. And then I'm gonna switch over to a dry patch. This dry patch, because it's nice and clean, is gonna really show us where we're at as far as how clean we are. You can't really trust those wet patches. I mean, like I showed you the color difference that we were getting, but really after you dry the bore, that's gonna be um, really a good indicator as to how clean you are. So there we go, have a lot left to go here. So I'm gonna do a few more patches and see where we get. If I know I have a long barrel like this to clean, I'm not cleaning like a revolver or a pistol, I'll get a stack of patches like this in one hand and just start soaking the top one with my cleaning solution. Really whatever cleaning solution that you have. Then I'll flip over that top one and just kind of smash it into the other ones so that everybody, all these patches, get a bit of that cleaning solution. And then I just have a stack of clean cleaning patches all ready to go for this process. And I'm gonna go through probably all of these in this process. And it might feel a little wasteful, you know, with all these patches and all the, all the solution, but it's really the cheapest maintenance that you can do on your muzzleloader. Um, if you skimp on cleaning, your, your muzzleloader is not gonna last very long. Um, there are other things that you can skimp on, you know, to save a little money here and there. Cleaning and the time that it takes to do cleaning is really not what you wanna skimp on. See there, already looking better. I'm kind of into a, a light, you know, 50% gray discoloration there. Much better than the black that we were seeing early on. And there's the latest pass you can see. So this was the pass before. Here's another pass, really getting close. So I'm gonna throw down a couple more wet patches at this point, uh, just to keep this going kind of have that, that grime on its way out, I think. A few more patches here and it'll be looking really good. We can kind of move on then to oiling and uh, cleaning up some of the mud and things we've got on the rifle. It's important too, to do this, um, you know, outside in a clean space where you can't lose anything or in your garage or your workshop. I don't recommend doing this in the house. Um, <laughs> I haven't dealt with it personally, but I, I've heard that my my grandmother kind of raised some cane with my grandfather for cleaning, cleaning muzzleloaders in the kitchen over the years. So uh, that's some uh, a, a tip for you out there. If you're cleaning your muzzleloader, make sure to do it not in the kitchen. So because my patches are a little large, really for this 40 caliber bore, I'm, I'm getting a couple more uses out of them. And here you can see, again, some more color difference in these passes that we're getting and why cleaning a lot of these swabs is really important. Um, so here's a, a previous swab on our right hand side and on our left, you can see the difference in, you know, grime still in there between these passes. And we're getting to a, a nice light color here, which is our goal. That's showing us that we're getting the black powder out of the barrel, out of the bore. There's not gonna be residue left in there that can cause that pitting and rusting that can affect our accuracy over time. Now, if you left your, if you went shooting and left your muzzleloader in the car, you know, for the weekend, you're gonna to start to see, uh, again, some of that surface rust. It's not going to be enough rust. I don't think it's gonna to totally ruin your rifle, um, but I, I don't recommend doing that. I like to clean the same day and uh, ideally within a few hours. So I, I shot, uh, went inside, had lunch, 
and that's about a 45 minute time difference. Um, you know, if you're shooting in the morning and you go back to camp and you wait to, to clean your rifle until the evening, you know, I think that's really fine too. It's where you start getting into the next day or the next couple days that it really starts to affect things. You can see here on this pass, we got a little bit more grime than I expected uh, when looking at the other patch. So we were able to loosen some of this up and pull it out. And, uh, you know, just another testament to just keep swabbing. My patches at this point I'm noticing are going down a lot smoother, a lot cleaner. They're not nearly as tough to get up and down. It's another indicator to look for as you're cleaning uh, to make sure that, or to, to feel that you're getting stuff out of the bore. And this is kind of personal taste. You don't necessarily have to do this, but kind of at this point I'll switch, um, you know, to some of my moose milk just to see if that breaks anything up that maybe the Shenandoah Valley hasn't in the bore. Really, you can stick to just one product. You could do all this with bowel stall if you wanted to, or all with the moose milk. Um, this is just kind of the routine that I've created uh, for me and for this rifle. I believe these Kibler kits have a pretty flat breech face that go in there. Um, depending on the muzzleloader that you have, they'll be a little concaved in there, um, especially some of the mass-produced muzzleloader kits, you know, kind of coming out of the 80s and things. So it might be the kind of thing that you need a, that you need a breech scraper uh, to get in there and clean up. And that's something I need to add to my kit for this rifle. Um, probably pick one up from Flintlocks LLC here at some point, one of those matches, so I can go in there and, and clean up that breech face. So I've talked a little bit about these cleaning patches here as we're cleaning here, but I, I, maybe it's good to break down some of the anatomy of this cleaning patch here. So these circles that you see on the patch, those are the base of your ramrod, and the lines coming out of it are where that patch engages with that rifling and where it's cleaning through that rifling. So when I'm talking about residue being present on the breech of the rifle as you're working and as you're shooting, that circle there at the base of your ramrod as you're forcing the patch down the barrel, that's where that breech is and that's where that residue can form and you want to get that cleaned up from your breech uh, because that can start to rust and pit your breech which you don't want. Something to show you here too, as I'm cleaning this, I have residue running out of my, my touch hole here, which is fine. Um, you'll see a lot of folks will put a toothpick or something in their touch hole um, so that they can fill their bore with cleaner and, and get it you know, how they want to clean it. Um, I'll just go through before I do anything, before I patch up and, and clean up this rifle for the day, I'll come in and wipe all that down. Um, I think ideally it'd be nice to start seeing some clear cleaning fluid running out of here um, as an indicator of how clean we are. I don't know that we're going to be able to get that though or not. I think it depends on how much fluid you're putting down the barrel. A lot of the old timers in kind of the, um, you know, late 1900s, you, you talk in the 70s and 80s, always talked about you need to take your barrel out and, and put it in the tub and clean it out that way. Um, that's definitely one way to do it. Because this rifle is so thin all the way around, I try to not take the barrel out as much as I can. Uh, I'm not really too concerned with it just because of, of how I clean it every time. I think I'm, I'm cleaning it pretty well. You know, like I said, it doesn't hurt to take the, take the barrel out every, you know, once a year or so and give it a nice scrub. Um, you don't need to put your muzzleloader in the bathtub. You just need some patience and some care uh, and a little extra time to clean it. I try to budget um, an hour, really, for each gun at the end of my shooting because I feel like with that hour, I get plenty of cleaning done. The patches, uh, it's enough time for me to get nice clean patches coming out of my rifle. Um, and it's also why you only really see me shooting one, uh, one rifle at a time. So I've run a couple patches down here and you can still see we're getting some residue out of our touch hole. We're just gonna keep scrubbing. And just like I talk about when we're building a muzzle loader, um, getting it to a clean a point is up to what you want, <laughs> is up to what you want out of it. So this is my latest patch that I've sent down. You can see I have a little bit of residue still on my rifling and a little bit on that breech face. I'm going to send a couple more wet patches down, um, bring them up and see if we can get any of that cleaned out uh, there around that, around that breech. I don't want that to start eating away at anything. Uh, but really, if I was going to be shooting tomorrow or next week, I would probably leave this the way it is. I'd oil up the bore, 
and, and go on from there. But um, it's going to be a little while before I'm shooting again, and I want to make sure that this isn't going to go south on me <laughs> between, between times I'm out. I personally don't think that cleaning your muzzleloader is too hard. Um, you know, I, I think I was watching in, in range TV the other day and he was talking about, he didn't like, you know, I mean, everybody says the, the worst part about muzzleloaders is cleaning them. And I think when you, when you understand that you just need to clean them and you need to take time to do it right, it's, um, you know, it's just part of the process. It's just, just like going out and shooting or getting them sighted in, finding a load for them. You know, everything takes a little longer. And that's okay. You know, don't let that be the reason that you don't um, get involved in muzzle loading or don't try it out. So our breech face really getting cleaned up now. Have barely any residue there. I'm gonna run down a little more ballast all in our patch down our bore. And you don't want to use it as an indicator for how clean the rest of the barrel is, but if you can look in your muzzle and kind of see some shine in there, you know that you're on the right track. At least that's what I think. Got a second patch down with the breech face nice and clean. I'm gonna run one more down, see if we can get three clean patches on that breech face. And if we can, I'm gonna oil up some patches and we'll start talking about oiling. Yeah, there you can see this is the last patch that I sent down. We have next to no residue on the breech. We have a little bit up around here in the rifling. Um, that's kind of something you're going to chase the whole time. Uh, but really, this is the kind of patch I'm looking for to kind of inform me that I can start moving on um, to, a, to the next step. I want to say real quick, if you have um, questions on patching, these are the patches that I'm using. They're from Hops. Um, I picked these up at Dunham's uh, just to kind of test out some market available patches. You'll see a lot of people cut their own patches from like just flannel from the fabric store or a nice soft cotton. Um, everybody's got what they like to use. Uh, like my family bench gun uses a couple different thicknesses of flannel depending on the cleaning that we're doing with it. Um, so it's really up to you, but these store-bought patches do work fine. It's just not necessarily as economic as um, cutting your own from a, from a couple yards of fabric. After I've got that nice clean patch and the clean breech face, I like to oil the inside and the outside of the barrel and I'll just kind of rub a nice coat of oil over the whole rifle, especially if I'm putting into storage for a month or more, really. Uh, the oil I like to use and my family's always used is cleanse oil here at the end. It's just a nice, it's a good oil for this, I think. Um, and the smell's not bad either. To do this, I use a couple of really oily patches. So I'll come through here and just apply some oil. And I mean like just soak in this patch. And I've got two patches here, so the top one is going to bleed into the bottom one. And I'm just going to kind of smush them together here. Make sure I get a nice, even coat of oil kind of on both of them. You can see this one needs a little bit more. We'll take this guy, and I'm going to run it. Really, I'm going to apply some more because it's, it's not as oily as we need it to be. I just want it to be just soaking because I want that oil to then just hang out and live in this bore Oops. until I need the rifle again. So I'm just going down and up. And you can see I've got a ton of, of extra oil here on top. I'm not too worried about that. It's not going to hurt anything. I'm just going to wipe that down a little bit. And then that really soaked patch that we ran down the bore, I'm just going to kind of stuff into our muzzle here. I'm going to leave enough of a tail so that I can pull it out when I need to. But I'll just leave that in there uh, to make sure that... I mean, one, there's nothing getting into the bore while I'm storing it. And two, the rest of the oil in this patch is going to, you know, either leak out or just be present in the bore, which I like. Um, and kind of keeps it moist, keeps it from rusting. Um, and then when I get out to the range the next time, I'll run a couple dry patches down to remove any of the oil that might still be left in there. So I've got my second patch here, nice and soaked with oil, and I'll just start wiping down uh, the muzzle end here because we do get some smoke and some flash, you know, out of our muzzle. And I'm just wiping down the entire stock here. I don't want this to be sticky, so I'll come back through maybe with a dry patch and wipe this down 
but I just want a nice coat on this so we don't get any of that surface rust. And we, if we do, you know, a little surface rust isn't going to kill us. We can come in, oil it up, and that surface rust is just going to disappear. So don't get disheartened. Don't, don't, um, don't freak out if you have a little surface rust on your rifle after it's been in storage. I like to get down in here into the trigger plates, trigger assemblies here. Kind of clean that up and wipe that down. You can see that we're getting a glisten. We haven't oiled anything back here and up here we have. Let's go through and do that on both sides with our oily patch. I'm setting the muzzle on my toe. You can see I've got a little mud here from being out at the range. I'm not worried about that. Again, that's going to kind of age the rifle naturally and get us a nice natural patina there. I'm going to oil up my patch box too. This doesn't hurt to oil any of this stuff up, especially taking care to oil around our touch hole. And like I said, around pretty much from your front sight back, I think it's good to oil just because you get a lot of smoke and flash from your pan in there. I'm going to oil my patch a little bit more. You can kind of see there it's lost a lot of that green that was in there when we freshly oiled it. So we're just going to oil that up a little bit more and we'll come down here and oil up our lock real good. Again, this is kind of a medium storage cleaning that I'm doing here. Um, you might clean differently. You might oil differently and that's okay. You know, different strokes, different folks. I like to make sure I take it back to half cock as I'm, as I'm oiling. Uh, on my first outing, really, I didn't give it a nice scrubbing and I had a little surface rust underneath there. Again, you can't tell that now. Um, but it's just something I like to do. Getting some oil in there. A little bit of oil here on the inside. Just to make sure that everything is protected before we take this back. I'm come up here. I'm going to oil up my top jaw using the same patch. You know, we're not getting a bunch of patches out here. And I want there to be some oily residue on all of this as we take it into storage. Now we're going to put our lock back in. Let's scrub this just a little bit more here. That's looking better. And you know, so far this has been fine for this rifle. You know, it's not perfect. It's not pretty. We've got some gunk just from general use, but it's not too bad. Dropping my lock back in. Something I haven't really done is oil my lock bolt. And that's something good to do because we do have that face that gets exposed a little bit to some of that black powder smoke. So I'm just wiping that down with that oily patch to finger start my lock bolt. I don't want to go in there torquing that too hard right out the gate and get it misaligned and then mess it up. Just snug that up like that. This is a 730 seconds screwdriver tip. Works great for all of the Kibler Southern Mountain Rifle bolts that I've found. Get our top jaw threaded back in here. Get our flint back in. It's always good to carry a couple flints, but it stinks to uh, get out into the field and realize that you don't have your flint in, especially since I've got a pretty good running flint. As you're doing this, you'll notice a lot of this gets real slippery with this oil. Uh, so be careful while you're, you know, putting on a half cock or full cock uh, to make sure you're not letting it go um, when you don't want it to. So then to finish up, I like to come in here and just stuff that oily patch in there into my frizzing pan just as a way to, uh, I nicked myself on my flint there, you can see that. Just as a way to, God, that's all bloody now. Just as a way to keep some extra oil in there to help prevent, you know, a little more surface rust here and there. Here you can see all the patches that we used from start to finish. I've, I've lined them up so that you can tell uh, the beginning of where we just had some really nasty, gnarly uh, black powder residue there up into where we finished up and, and, you know, called it enough for our cleaning. I've been down here in the shop cleaning for about an hour now, um, but we have everything cleaned up and ready to go. And this is the same method that I use every time I take my rifle out and go shooting. And I'll use the same method on all of my rifles. The chemicals might change, you know, with Blackhorn 209, there's a couple things out there that work a little bit better. But for true black powder, this is my process. And, you know, that extra hour at the end of the day, uh, if anything else, it's, an, it's incentive to shoot a little bit more uh, during the day to try to balance that out. You know, I don't want to clean as much as I'm shooting. I'll try to shoot a little bit more than I'm cleaning. And, and, you know, you can always help this 
by you know swapping between shots or every few shots when you're out there shooting it will uh, lessen the buildup of black powder in your board in your rifle but um you know i know this is kind of a, a different video not as exciting not not as uh, flashy but i hope you enjoyed taking a look at how i clean my muzzleloader if you clean yours a different way or or notice that i should be doing something differently please let me know in the comments uh, i i would really like that to be a resource for folks to hear about and read about different cleaning methods out there um, and i'll put all of the information that i've shared here uh, in the blog post to go with this video at ilovemuzzleloading.com just to help uh, kind of share some of these resources so if you've been doing this you know for 50 60 years i mean if you've been doing it for 20 years and you know how to do this differently you have a different process please let me know in the comments it's going to help other people that find this video uh, hear a different way to uh, to clean their muzzleloader and hopefully get them out there shooting some more so i'm ethan i love muzzleloading thank you so much for watching if you'd like to learn more about this or have any questions you can email me i love muzzleloading at gmail.com or you can visit i love muzzleloading.com Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.